what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it. First off, so we talked about the running game. And again, guys, I feel a bit bad because I don't, I, I feel like I led people to believe that I think the running game is awful. That is not the case, okay? I just had higher expectations for it. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here, Jake. I think USC's front seven is actually pretty good. The technique that they played with, the extension of the D tackles, the heavy hands of the linebackers, the Antolin scheme, the, the, the new aggression. You saw the size increases um, uh, during the broadcast. Like I think by years in, we're going to think USC's front seven is pretty good. I think they can hold up in the Big Ten. Am I wrong? Right now, with what we have, like the only sample size that we have, I think you're right. I'm not going to say that they're the stout, the most stout front seven, you know, in the Big Ten, but they're they're going to be able to compete if they play like that. And again, like the guys that were playing at a high level, you're talking about transfers from Vanderbilt, A and M, Oklahoma State, you know, programs that play in leagues and play toughness than you know USC has in the past. So. No, if they, dude, if they play like that, I mean, they're they're a contender in the Big Ten as far as those three, four, five teams, right? They might not get to one and two, but yeah. three, four, five, and with a chance to make a 12-team playoff. They're not going to go undefeated, no, but if the, if we look up and they're 10 and two, I wouldn't be shocked at all now. This makes me hate Alex Grinch even more, dude. Why couldn't you just stuck around another year? DeAnton Lynn's way too good. Hmm. Anyway, here's what Brian Kelly had to say about how the running games look this week. I think from a running game standpoint, I think really, you know, as we continue to, um, you know, unwrap the running game from last week, it, it really was situational more than anything else. It was, you know, our short yardage running, situational running. And I think, you know, as you and I talked about it uh, earlier in the week, it's it's really trying not to be in a, such a predictable formation. Um, yeah. You know, having a little bit more balance to the, the offensive sets. I like what we do. I like our players up front. I'm very confident that, you know, as time moves on, you know, the offense and in particular the running game is going to be the strength. Um, Again, I love that because, again, I don't want to get away from it. I I want to stick to it. I think you will get better and better. I think you'll run into front sevens that aren't as good. Uh, I think think it'll get better. Um, And then, of course, there was the heartbreaking news about John Emery, the cruelest and worst part of football. Uh, here is Brian Kelly on his running back that looked like he was ready to take a massive step forward. John, um, you know, it's just sometimes you think about this and and it just wonder, you know, how can this be fair in any way yeah. to this poor kid? I mean, he's just overcome so many obstacles and you know, he's in a non-contact situation non-contact. and he sticks his foot in the ground and, and, he, and he tears his knee up. And so it's just, it was just so disappointing. He had surgery today, successful surgery. Um, and Prince did. Princeton Malbrew had surgery today. So obviously we, we've lost both of them. But yeah, it's, it's, it was so disappointing and um, we feel so bad for him and, and his uh his family, but you know, John has overcome so much. I'm so proud of what he's accomplished in getting his degree from LSU, and um, he's going to be successful in life. And um, you know, we'll see what the future holds for him. Yeah, that's all. I, that's all I hope for John Emery. Maybe it's still in football. Maybe it's not. I just hope he has success. Hell, look, if he wants to keep playing college, Cam McCormick's out here on his ninth year scoring. I was about to say, yeah. If he wants to, there's no way they can deny him. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. But but I would also get it if you'd maybe want to hang it up, or just or be like, I'm just gonna try to make the league yeah. and see what happens. Because I mean, there's UFL, like there's you know there's more professional opportunity than there's ever been in football before. Yeah, and he's certainly good enough where he wouldn't probably get drafted because of the injury history. No, but he could go into camp, play in the preseason, flash. He could go to the UFL and certainly have moments and and get noticed there as well. So whatever he decides to do, like Coach Kelly just said there, he's already been through so much. I'm going to bet on him to be able to come back and if he wants to, give it another go. Yeah, uh, and then finally, how did John Emery react to the situation? 
if I may, just one more on John. How did how did he react to the injury? You know, it's obviously you a think? tough I situation. Mean, devastated. And, and, you know, obviously we're holding out hope, um, you know, but he knew in his heart uh, because he's been through it before, right? Um, you know, we were hoping that, you know, it was just a strain. We were hoping that it wasn't, you know, what we thought it would, might be. Um, but he was devastated. So, um, you know, we're just, again, um, I can tell you that it was a low point um, for all of the coaches um, and everybody surrounding him because it just didn't seem fair. Bruh, if you're a player on this team right now, you got to honor your brother, man. You got to honor your brother, man. I mean, you think about the real life stuff, like what Greg Brooks is still continuing to go through and continuing to fight. You think about Emory. You just never know when yep. this game is going to be ripped away from you. And if this isn't a visceral reminder, if this doesn't inspire you to give everything that you have, to leave everything on the field. I mean, this is what I, when I was talking to the UHI football team the other day, this is what I was telling them, man. Football's a weird game where it's the only game that you don't get to play it when you're older. There's no pickup men's leagues. Flag football ain't football, even if that's what you're playing. Like, it's fun. Don't get me wrong, but that's not, that's not it. Yeah. You don't get to play. There's no bad. There's no basketball. It's not like basketball. It's not like baseball. There's no soft pitch. You get this one opportunity to play. So I don't give a damn if it's nickels. Go, go play as hard as you freaking can and honor those who no longer can. So LSU with a couple of injuries now very light at running back. It's going to be Kelly five, Alondra. Uh, LSU making a change in, uh, to, to, to a young player. Uh, and where he's playing. We moved Juwan Johnson to running back. And uh, so he, he's getting some carries and touches this week. And, um, you know, I think he's going to win the Heisman. We might as well get this out there. Um, no, he's not going to. I'm just kidding with you. But um, okay. he, he's going to play some running back for us, and he gives us the fourth back and, and gives us a little bit more balance there. And, you know, he's an exciting player. Um, he can do a lot of things. Um, we felt like we could shuffle some things around on the defensive side of the ball um, and and begin to get him involved. Obviously, there's, there's going to be a learning curve on some things. Um, there's a learning curve on some of those things, but certainly uh, I think he can do some things for us this weekend. Uh, that's kind of interesting because I, I thought the Heisman, I, I, this is the first time I'm here. I thought the Heisman line is very funny because a move like this is like when you hear about, uh, uh, somebody being the 53rd man on an NFL roster. Like you're not actually going to ever think about that person again. Generally, that's what I think, but that kind of sounds like maybe they're light enough where he might see some time. He said maybe this see weekend. some carries. Yeah. I mean, if he's going to play, certainly like if you want to get him some in game action, Nichols would feel like. The opportunity to do so. So, Juwan Johnson, freshman, athlete, four-star out of high school, uh, been playing safety up to this point. And remember, the most interesting spelling of Juwan I've ever seen. It's J-U apostrophe, Juan, J-U-A-N. Juwan? Hell yeah. <laughs> I think that's intriguing. Uh, I Look, I, I, we don't dive into a lot of high school football here, obviously, but... His highlight tape was one that still made it in front of you, and it was always highly impressive. Lafayette Christian, I'm sure Taylor, shout out, you've seen him play and, and kind of know what his skill set is. Well, yeah, and then when you when everybody went to Brian Kelly's press conference, like the day of signing day, the the February when when the class was finalized, they asked him like, "Hey, who are some guys we need to keep an eye on?" One of the first names out of his mouth was Jawan Johnson. He okay. said, "I believe Jawan Johnson is the best athlete in this class." He's uh -huh. like, he was a two-way player in high school. He's like, he's going to play a lot of football for us. He's like, it may not be this year, but he's going to get on the field soon. Like, that was that was one of the first guys he highlighted back in the spring when this class was finalized. Uh, I know you all think Travis Hunter's tight, but have you ever seen Juwan Johnson? Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.